Hi and welcome back to a new video. Again, we will have a flat PC. So that PC is still from the flood which occurred in Germany, like in uh, the western region of Germany, in Arweiler, um, several weeks ago. Unfortunately, we didn't have time in between to take care of this one. So that's the last one we're going to try to rescue, try to clean. Um, it's the PC from Keanu. And um, yeah, just component-wise, it's Intel-based 9900K. And he was also worried that this could be his biggest loss because he really likes the CPU. and. I'm pretty confident, pretty sure that we will be able to save 9900K. The GPU is at 2080 Ti in the Aros Water Force edition, but it's the AIO version of it. Yeah, let's just see. Z Sonic, the heart of your system. The PC is still wrapped. That's probably also conserving some of the moisture inside, uh, which doesn't make it better over such a long time period, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. The good thing about this one is because it's already starting to dry or most of it is already dry, it doesn't smell as bad. That is awesome, he packed a petrol station voucher in there for me. And that's exactly the same petrol I need for my GTR, so <laughs> thank you very much. That is a perfect example of that you can clean some parts of the front to make it look less bad, but yeah, on the backside there is the truth. I know that some people will be shocked again, deep in their hearts, but we're not going to reuse and clean the case. Sorry about that, but the effort is just too much and we have a new sample from NZXT with uh, H510 Flow Edition, something like that. So it's a new case that hasn't been out yet. And I guess that's very cool for him as well to get a, a case which is not on the market yet. Um, so the first thing we're checking now is just the data, SSDs, HDDs, if there are any in there and trying to take them out first. One thing which is different about this PC than the other two is the fact that this one was um, sitting in the basement, which is pretty much the lowest position in your house. And also the first, like if your PC is placed on the floor, the PSU will sit lower than your socket in your basement, uh, which makes it very likely that the PSU might be the first point of contact with your water and the current in your house. So yeah, that could be like, the, the danger or the possibilities that something is damaged in this PC is a lot, lot higher than in the other cases, which were in like the second or third floor, for example. And um, they were sure that there was no power anymore in the entire house um, once the, the water reached it. So it was just dirty and wet. But for this one, it's not clear if everything uh, survived or not. For this PC, because the tempered glass broke, it's also the danger that we have some of those sharp glass parts inside. but. Since I'm wearing gloves anyway, it shouldn't be an issue. If I see this, then it always reminds me how lazy I am, because if I mount radiators inside cases, I'm always just using like the four outer screws, which is absolutely sufficient. But <coughs> I mean, most of the people use all screws, like 12, which is usually a bit over the top, but yeah, obviously you can do it. My initial thought that we might want to keep the AIO for the system, you can see those screws heavily corroded, except for one, which is kind of funny. So those are like all stainless screws, except, well, no, one is a stainless screw and all the others are not, which is very weird. Strange. Or the water didn't reach this one for whatever reason, but that's very unlikely, I think. The memory sticks uh, look quite all right. And the good thing is, uh, compared to the previous two PCs, that meanwhile I also bought some sticky thermal pads, which means that we can probably clean those and then just re-glue the original heat spreader. 
I'm already looking forward to clean the radiator because of the enormous amount of surface area. All the mud will be stuck in there. But yeah, there's no way around that, I guess. Unless we can replace it like internally on the GPU, but I doubt that. We'll see. Hmm. I just wondered why the riser cable came off. I thought this would be also like screwed to the case, but seems to be just like glued to it. Hmm. The Wi-Fi card, except for the fact that this is bent quite heavily, which is not a problem. We can easily fix that, but you can see there is a lot of rust, like corrosion on those metal parts. Let's just open it up and check it inside, but it's just a Wi-Fi card, so it wouldn't be that much of an issue to replace it. Underneath, it's not as bad. I mean, the area on top left and top right don't look that great, but the rest is actually all right, I think. The mainboard itself could be worse. It's not great, but I think there is a chance that it still works. It mainly also depends on the corrosion, especially on like pins inside the slots. Could be an issue when it comes to corrosion. I can see clear corrosion on the top slot right here, for example. Um, in this one, we had the riser cable, so this could be okay. The rust and the corrosion on the socket itself should not be an issue because that should be caused by the AIO screws, which were not stainless steel. So we can probably just wipe this right off. The BIOS battery looks concerning. That could not only, I mean, obviously it's not great for the battery itself, but it could also damage further components like the BIOS itself. And then, yeah, a lot of corrosion on some of the other areas, some of the screws which are not stainless steel, especially the backside. I mean, it's a lot of dirt, but there are several points where you have mixed metals, like um, yeah, corroded metals, especially in the screw heads. But all right, we'll take all the components to my place and then slowly take everything apart and check which parts are still working. For some reason, this SSD looks much cleaner, much better than all the others we had so far. The Wi-Fi adapter is mixed. I mean, there's a lot of corrosion, a lot of rust everywhere, especially on those like metal shielding parts. Should be possible to save it though. Not sure how clean we will be able to get this, but it should probably work afterwards. For the memory kits, just have to heat them up to make sure that we can uh, remove the heat spreader and then I organized some double-sided adhesive tape so we can make sure that we can also stick back the original heat sinks. One final step is the cleaning with alcohol and then we're almost done with these parts. The component I'm still most worried about is the mainboard. I mean, just look at the corrosion around the socket. I guess this part of the frame should be fine. We can probably clean that and just like uh, scratch it off or maybe sand it off. We will remove the CPU from the socket in a second. Also cleaning the socket itself is probably also fine. Then there is still an additional SSD underneath here. But what I'm very worried about is the fact that the battery has spent all the time inside the socket itself. And that's, I mean, it's connected to the BIOS chips and that can potentially damage some parts.
very curious about the chipset because I mean that's a very perfect area for a lot of dirt to get stuck underneath. It's not too bad. It's very interesting that a lot of the stuff is actually stuck to the heatsink but not to the PCB. Alright, let's check for the BIOS battery. That contact pin probably has to be grinded a bit to make sure we remove the like rough corrosion from the surface, but the rest is actually okay. Now that's the moment I've been most worried about. Let's check socket and CPU. The good thing about such CPUs is that those contact pads on the bottom, they're gold plated and gold is very resistant to any kind of corrosion. So that's actually okay. The socket could be all right. I just hope that most of the stains we can see right here is caused by some kind of dirt like mud or whatever, which was still inside the water. The typical corrosion is just like on the mixed metal areas, especially like on the steel, copper combinations, for example, what we can see right here as well, but it's just a screw, so that won't really matter. Some of those uh, slots cannot really look inside with the camera, but I can see it if I just check it very close up. Some of these are badly corroded inside, um, but not sure if you need all of those expansion slots, so that's maybe not that much of an issue. But apart from that, it's not too bad. Meanwhile, the components uh, could dry in my oven. If you ever have memory sticks where you maybe want to swap the heats better or whatever and you still have those like uh, glue, sticky pad residues, then just use the tape method. For that, just heat up your memory sticks slightly and gently. You don't have to use a hot air gun, you can also simply use a normal hair dryer. Then simply take some tape and just use the tape to remove the glue. Very simple, very fast, also much simpler than using some like chemicals or whatever. Now quickly clean the surface before we stick on the tape. Now added the sticky tape, pretty much ready to go. The only thing I want to do first before I stick back the IHSs to the memory kit is to also check if they're actually working. So sticking back those into a different board, at the same time the M.2 drive and the SATA drive and probably I will also clean the CPU first and see if it also works. Being somewhat of a hardware hoarder, I usually should have some main boards still in my basement. Uh, well, um, yeah, no comment. Uh, have to dig. Shouldn't that be almost exactly the same model? Yeah, I should definitely spend some time organizing and cleaning this up. Same drying process for the 9900K and since it's a soldered CPU it still has this like notch or like missing part of the glue on the bottom which means that if you're cleaning this with like alcohol or anything you will have the alcohol entering this tiny gap on the bottom which means after cleaning process you still have to heat this up to like 80 90 degrees celsius for let's say 15 to 20 minutes to make sure that there is no moisture no alcohol nothing left underneath underneath the heat spreader. Even though this board is already a few generations old, I think it still looks absolutely nice. CPU and socket, M.2 SSD as well, memory sticks in place. The only thing that's missing is the SATA drive. We will uh, test that on a second attempt. And now I will put on a cooler and check if everything is alive. So it's stuck at CPU detection, which is never a good sign. Second attempt. It's still stuck. Damn. I removed the CPU from the socket, put it back in, also did a power cycle, power reset, BIOS reset, and now double checking if the CPU is still working. Okay, that looks much better. CPU is getting warm. Yep. Yeah, so for some reason, after putting the CPU cooling 
block, like the air cooler back on. It's still stuck again at CPU detection. Not sure if there's like a weird socket contact issue, maybe if some of the pins or one of the pins is corroded. Let me maybe clean that again. Now this looks great. I used this like uh, glass fiber pen, whatever it's called. It's usually used for soldering to remove some of the soldering mask. I scratched some of the like darker pins on the CPU, were like two or three of them. Very, very carefully, we are inside his OS. It's not connected to the internet. I'm not going to access any kind of data. I will immediately shut it off now. Uh, because I don't want to like harm his privacy or whatever. But memory sticks are working, SSD is working, CPU is working. Awesome. Now that we know that the memory sticks are working as intended, I glued back the IHS, just peeled off the foil, sticked it back together. It looks like new. Perfect. As usual, things often take longer as expected. My original plan was to like clean all the components, test everything and build an entire new computer within one day. And now it's like, uh, yeah, 9 p.m. Saturday and tomorrow I planned to release this video. Well, actually today for you guys on a Sunday. As usual, things often take longer than expected. My original plan was to like test all the components, clean everything and build the entire new computer within one day which didn't work out because it's Saturday 9 p.m. and tomorrow we have to release this video. All right, and there's still a lot to clean, a lot to test. The main board, the entire GPU has to be cleaned and tested. And also I will need some guidance in order to know what exactly we're going to do because obviously we could just give him the C370 hours master and just neglect the old motherboard. But then, I mean, I still want to know if we can like rescue this, if we can save it or not or if it's permanently damaged. So I, will, I would definitely still check the C390 Aorus Pro, his original motherboard, but we could also give him the new one just because it's, I mean, it's in a much better condition, much better state, all the slots are working and everything. So maybe give me some guidance so we know exactly what we could do for him. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye-bye.